Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I need you to do. Actually, we're not going to grade the homework tonight. I'm just going to collect it. And I will grade it because it's real easy for me to grade. So make sure your first and last name's on it. And then someone at your table group, gather them and hold them up in the air. And I will come and collect them. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Okay. Woo! We started 30 seconds early. Okay, do I have all the homework papers? Awesome. Okay, now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you cars and rulers. Okay? Now, there isn't enough for every person to have a car. I'm going to give two cars to each group. You got a fire truck? Cool! Okay? These are Matchbox cars. Let me tell you something about Matchbox, okay? Matchbox is a company that makes small cars. But they like big cars, okay? They like, you got rulers here. I got one more. There you go. Okay, they like big cars. Now, here is what I want you to do, okay? On, I want you to play around with the car a little bit. <laughs> Just because, okay, there you go. Okay, now we're done playing around with the cars. Now we're done playing around with the cars, okay? Here's what I want you to do. On the back of your car, on the bottom of your car, somewhere on the bottom of your car is a ratio. And I want you to find that ratio, okay? Find that ratio. Oops, this one, come on, there we go. Okay, if you, if you, because we don't have enough cars for everyone, so look around and see if you can find that ratio. Okay, who wants to share with me what their ratio is? Yes. One to 65. Okay, what's yours? One to 76. One to 76. This is huge. Okay, what's yours? Uh, one to 84. Oh, man. That's the fire truck, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yes? One to 71. One to 71. Who's got the big... The big car. Who's got the big car? What's yours? 1 to 43. Okay. Because, uh, well, let's work with these now. Okay. Here's, what I, here's what's cool about, about Matchbox. They wish they had big cars. They don't. They make Matchbox cars. But what they do is they take the big car and they shrink it down into a size you can put in your pocket, okay? And so this scale, this ratio tells us, yes, wonderful. You don't need a piece of paper for everyone. I'm just giving you some scrap paper to do a little bit of calculations, okay? This scale tells us how big the actual car really is. Okay, so here's what I want you to figure out. I want you to take your matchbox car and take your ruler and measure your matchbox cars in millimeters. Take your matchbox car and measure it in millimeters. Probably set it down because I don't know where your, you see where your inch, your zero thing is? Make sure you, yeah. Okay. How many millimeters is your matchbox car? Who had one to 65? Who had one to 65? What, how many millimeters is your actual car? I mean, your, your model car? 
74 millimeters. And so what this is saying is for every millimeter on your Matchbox car, the actual car is 65 millimeters. So take 74 times 65. Okay, go ahead and do that on your calculator. Who's got 1 to 76? Okay, how big is your, is your, how many millimeters is your Matchbox car? Seven, so it's 76 millimeters times 76 millimeters of the actual one. Who's got the fire truck? How many millimeters is your actual, is your Matchbox car fire truck? 10, 10 millimeters. No, that's like, that's like that big. We're, we're just doing it right here. How many? Oh, so you're using inches. You use millimeters oh. over here. Okay. So it's seven, 774 millimeters. So you're doing 74 times 84. Okay. Who's got the one to 71? No one. Okay. <clears throat> How did I get that number then? Who's got the one to 43? That's you guys over there, right? How big is the, act, is the matchbox car? 64 millimeters times 43 millimeters. Okay? Now, who did this math problem? What'd you get? 4,810. So the actual car is 4,810 millimeters long. Okay, 76 times 76. Yes? 5,776. 74 times 84. Oh my God, it's 6,200. 6, and what? 16. 16? 2,600. Okay, we didn't do that one. 64 times 43. Who did that one? Yeah? 2,700. Ooh, that's a short car. 2,700 and what? 52. That's, that's millimeters. Let's convert them into meters. How do we convert into meters? Remember? King Henry died by make, drinking chocolate milk. Okay? So you're going from milk, chocolate milk, to buy the base. So it's how many millimeters are in a meter? A thousand, right? So this makes it really easy. Because what do you have to do to change a thousand on here? Move the decimal three places, right? 4.8 meters, 5.7 meters, 6.2 meters, 2.7 meters. Okay? So let's see how big it actually is, shall we? 1 to 65. Hold your car up. Whoever had 1 to 65. Okay? So grab a hold of this. Which way am I going? Oh, that's inches on that side. 70, 80, 90. Here's four meters. And what is it? 4.8. Okay, you got to back up some. Okay, that's, that's the, hold, hold your car up. That's the length of the actual car. Well, you remember, you've got, you've got like the engine, and you've got the, the boot, and you've got, you know, the, everything else. The bumpers and everything like that. Okay? Okay, who's got, uh, who had the one to 76? Excellent, grab that one. How far is it? 5.7. So, there's 5 meters, 5.7 meters. Okay? Fire truck, 6.2, give, give him the, give the oh, yeah, hold up, hold up so we can see. That's the, act, that's the model. Here's the actual. It's a big SUV. Get the uh, fire truck. Hand him that slip. slip. You're probably going to have to go sideways because we can't quite fit here. So go over, go over there by the camera. There you go, right there, right there. Whoa, whoa, don't go too far. <laughs> and this is what? 
6.2. Okay, here's 6 meters. Here's 6.2 meters. So, okay, that seems to me to be a fairly small fire truck. But it's not one of those big hook and ladder trucks, is it? Okay, so by looking at the bottom of your... Oh, okay, now let go. Let go. Woo! Don't catch it, don't catch it. I don't want you to break my thing. Okay, so by looking at the bottom of your... Of your um, car, matchbox car, and finding the scale, we can actually find out how big the actual car is. Now, here's what I need you to do. I need you to put the rulers and the cars in my basket here, in my bag, please. Oh, careful with these. They're not mine. Actually, three of them are mine, but uh, the rest of them are uh, Daniel Faber's and Foster's. So, okay. Is that my ruler? Excellent. Okay. Drive that right in there. Well done. Okay. So that's that. Now, here's something else I want you to do. Okay. Let's gather around this table right here. Mr. Myrick, this is going to be kind of hard for you to video, but see if what you can do. Okay. Yeah, make room for the camera. This is blueprints. Yeah, they're blue. Okay. This is blueprints for Westervelt Dorm. Westy, down down by the by the shed. By the, well, it says Westervelt Dorm right there. Plus I've been in the dorm. No, we're not gonna go rob them. But we could use this to rob them if we really wanted to. We're not going to because they would, you know, not be happy. Okay, so the dorm, the dorm part is here. You've got like uh, 12 rooms and you've got the showers and the toilets and the washroom and the, I have no idea what that is. Maybe it's a storage room or whatever, but it's where they, that's where they put their mops and brooms and stuff. And then the, rec the, the dorm a lounge and a dorm kitchen. And then this here is the downstairs of the dorm parents and the upstairs of the dorm parents. Okay, I found out last period that Mateos, that's his bedroom. In case you wanted to know. Okay. So if you want to go rob Mateos, I give you permission, but not the dorm boys. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, so when a, a um, architect is making blueprints, he wants to be as specific as possible. What happens if someone takes the blueprints and decides, hmm, I'm just going to build it? Yeah. You could have like a really weird room, like one room's massive. One room would be huge and one room would be small. Or what else might happen? It would be constructed weird so it could collapse. It could collapse, and that happens an awful lot in Kenya, doesn't it? Buildings collapse, don't they? If you're reading in a newspaper, we so often buildings collapse. Okay, and so what the what the architect does is he designs this building, and then he tells the person building it exactly how big to make each room. And he does that by putting a scale just like that. The scale on this one is down here. What does it say? One to a hundred. Okay? There is no um, units on here. Just like there was no units on the bottom of your matchbox car. And what that means is it doesn't matter what you measure it in as long as it's one to a hundred. If you measure it in millimeters, one millimeters equals a hundred millimeters. If you measure it in centimeters, one centimeter is a hundred centimeters. If you measure it in inches, one inch is? 100. 100 inches, okay? And so um, if we take a ruler, okay, and let's measure room number nine. Let's do it in, uh, cent uh, uh, let's do it in millimeters, okay? So that's 330, what, 32 centimeters from wall to wall? Mm -hmm. Not counting the wall? So 32, 32 millimeters would be? 
3,200 millimeters, or 3.2 meters. So, so that's how wide that particular room is. Okay. Um, if you were going to measure it in inches, let's measure it in inches. How far is it in inches? Well, there's one, one and a half inches, so it's about one and a quarter inches, 1.25 inches. So how many inches across would it be? A like hundred and twenty-five <laughs> inches. Okay, so it's about, if you then converted that to feet, that'd be about 10 feet across. Yes? Um, couldn't you mess that up, though, if you didn't know what unit you were supposed to use? Well, that's, that's why the, the, the um, architect has not given a measurement. As long as I measure this in inches and go down to the room and measure it in inches, it'll be the same. If I measure it in millimeters and go down to the room and measure it in millimeters, it'll be the same. If I go down and if I measure it in light years, it's going to be very small, <laughs> and then I go down to the room and measure it in light years, it'll be the same because he hasn't given us any, measure, any units because it doesn't matter what you measure it in as long as you measure the map, the, the scale drawing, and the actual with the same unit. Okay. Now, here's a problem we have. Okay. This is a fairly large building. But there's a lot of things that you need different scales for, OK? So for example, this here, OK, this is going to be really nasty. This is the septic tank, OK? It means when you go to the bathroom or you take a shower, the water comes into here, OK? How many of you were on sixth grade safari last year? Yes. Do you remember when we went around the back? Oh, sorry for those of you that weren't here. Aw. When, we <laughs> when we went around the back of the library in that building and we saw that plant thing that he showed us, that's what this is. Okay? Your, your dirty water comes in here and then it runs through the grit chambers around and around and around and finally comes out here and it's a bit cleaner. Okay? At the one up on sixth grade safari, they had three of these side by side, and, and it would go through all three of them. With the one up on sixth grade safari, after it went through the three of them, you could drink that water. No, you can. It's clean. Okay. This one, it's only got one. Don't, don't drink it. Okay. But here's the thing. We decided, we decided this was, this was, what, about 10 feet across, right? One, one and a... One and a quarter inches, it's about 10 feet. So let's see how long this one is. Okay, this is about eight and a half inches. So what would that be? A very, very large, much, much, much larger because now we're putting, we're putting eight rooms. Okay, and we know it's not that big. So what do we need to do? Check for the scale. So let's look at the scale. Oh, well, look at the scale down here. What's the scale down here for this one? One to ten. One to ten. So instead of, instead of eight inches across, instead of it being 800 inches, it's only 80 inches. Okay, that's much, much better. Okay. Um, what this, here's a post for something or t'other. Cooking, oh, it's a chimney. Here's the chimney. Elevation section, cooking place, and chimney. Okay, what's the scale? One to 20. Here's a corner chimney. What's the scale? One to 20. Here's a towel rack they're putting up in the servants' quarters. I bet you didn't know they had servants' quarters, did they? No, I don't. I think that's, I think that's just where the dorm kids, I think that's that, you know, where the dorm kids live in the servants' quarters, okay? No, what's, what's the scale? One to 10, okay? So, and, and this is really cool because the builder wants to make sure that everything is very precise. And so he draws individual pictures. Here's the chimney going all the way up to the top. And so we can measure how tall the chimney is going to be. If we use the scale, maybe the scale is 1 to 20 here. Yeah, the scale here is 1 to 20. Okay. But he gets even more detail. This is amazing. Okay. 
Here's looking from the front where the main entrance to the dorm is. Here's looking from the back. Here's looking from one end of the building. Here's looking from the other end of the building. Another drawing of the various rooms and elevations. Then here, this is really cool. Where are all of the electrical outlets going to go? You can measure this and see exactly where the outlet goes. Okay, look at this here. That, that's a light switch. And then you've got a wire going to the light in the center of the room. You've got a light switch and a wire going to the light in the center of the room. You've got a light switch and a wire going to the center of the room. This is cool. There's a light switch down here. Oh, careful. And there's a light switch way over here. And where do the wires go? Oh. One goes here and one goes here and then here. So, that, so these two light switches actually light up all of these lights. And they, so they've got, they've got even where the wires go. That's how precise they need to be because they don't want the building to fall over. Okay? Uh, let's see what's on here. More electrical stuff. Details of the handrails. This is the handrails for the steps. How wide do the handrails have to be? How tall each step and how wide each step is going to be? Going up the steps and coming to uh, ground floor plan up to the first floor. Okay? So they can tell you exactly how many centimeters, millimeters, the step has to be. What happens if you have the steps and the person building the building decides, you know what, I'm going to add three more steps into this thing just because. What's that going to do to your building? It's going to mess it up because you only have, you only have this much space for your steps. And so if the builder decides he's not going to pay attention to the scale when he is building his building, you're not going to have a very good building. Okay? Um, look at the price of these. I mean, uh, not the price, the year. 1990. So, that build, so these plans were drawn in 1990. These are the final plans. So that building was built probably 91, 1992. And it's still standing. And it's a pretty good dorm. Eventually, some of you guys might be in this dorm. Okay? Maybe next year? Maybe some of the ninth graders? I know sometimes. Okay. Uh, um, and, so, and so because the builder, because the, the architect used scale drawings, scale models, scale drawings, and the builder followed the plans and used the same scale when he built it, that building is still up and still standing and going to be, and it's being used right now, which is really, really, really cool. Okay? Okay. Back to your seats, and we'll take some class notes. Oh, man, class notes. Oh. Oh. And he just threw it together. He thought it looked really great. He put it together. It was so bad looking. While I was here last time, they tore the thing down and built it. Uh, he didn't draw it out, and he didn't pay attention to the scale. Yeah. So his house looked like stuff. I mean, all the things they're doing. Okay, so here is class notes. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. One, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. Scale maps and scale drawings and just plain old scale, okay? Uh, what's my name again? Oh, that's right. And period seven, okay? So, scale drawings. Let's talk about scale drawings real quick, okay? A scale drawing... is an enlarged or reduced drawing of an object 
that is similar to an actual object. Okay, enlarged or reduced. This um, blueprint, is that an enlargement of the building or a reduction of the building? Reduction. reduction of a building. Okay, we've taken the building and shrunk it down and put it on paper. In science class, what are you learning? Taxonomy. Uh-huh. Bacterias and virus. Has Mrs. Tilly asked you to draw a picture of a bacteria or a virus or anything? No, but if she did, you're taking something really, 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 really teeny and you're enlarging it and putting it on paper. So it's still a scale drawing, it just happens to be an enlargement. Okay? Um, similar. Remember from yesterday, what was our definition of similar? Our math definition of similar. Not the English definition of similar. English de definition is, oh, it looks about right. What's our math definition? Remember, there were two parts to it. What's the first part? Who remembers? Oh, you're going to pull it up from yesterday's notes. Excellent idea. Yes? The sides are equivalent. Okay, the sides, the ratio of the sides are all equivalent. That's one part. And what's the second part? And the angles are all the angles are the same. Okay? So a 90-degree angle in your blueprints better be a 90-degree angle in your real building. Okay? So that's, that's what we're talking about when we talk about scale drawing. It's enlarged or reduced, depending on which way you go, and it's similar to what, you are, what the actual object is. Okay? Let's talk scale. Scale, a scale. This is scale, again, this is math scale. This is not PE gymnastics scale. We're not doing one of these. Okay? <laughs> That's gymnastic scale. That has nothing to do with this. That was an awful poor scale, wasn't it? Yes, thank you. Okay. A scale is the ratio that compares a length in a drawing or model. So drawing, that would be, that would be our, our uh, blueprints. Model, that would be your matchbox car, right? A length in a drawing or model to the score corresponding length in the actual object. Okay? Now, here's what you need to understand when you're doing scale. In setting up a scale, the correct format for setting up the scale is always model to actual. It's always model to actual, okay? So when it said 1 to 64 on the bottom of your matchbox car, that was one unit on the model is 64 units in the actual. When it said 1 to 100 on, your, on the um, uh, blueprints, it's one unit on the blueprint is 100 units in the actual building, okay? Always set up model to actual, okay? Now, here's a cool thing. There are different ways you can write the scale of something, and these are going to look very similar to what we talked about day one uh, of this chapter, uh, the ratios, okay? There are three ways that you can write scale, okay? We have a 15-foot boat, We've drawn a picture, and on that picture, that 15-foot boat is one inch long. How do we set it up? What has to come first? The actual or the model? Model. model. So our model is one inch, right? One inch, okay? Two, and I'm going to use a colon, 15 feet, okay? Does that look similar to what you had for um, ratios? Because it is a ratio, okay? Number two, you can write it as a fraction. One inch to 15 feet. Does that look similar to the ratio? Third one does not look like the ratio. Remember the third one on the ratio was using the word two? Yeah, well not, not when you're doing scale. Scale, you actually can use the equal sign. One inch equals 15 feet. 
feet. Okay? So those are the three ways to draw scales or on, on models, on maps, or something like that. For this one here, because we are using different units, foot and inch, we have to use our units down here. On the matchbox car and on the blueprint, there was no units. Why? Here, our units are inches and feet. What did we do with the matchbox car? Go ahead, make a guess. Same. 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 Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> little prompting. Yes, if the, if the units are the same, inches to inches, you don't need to use units. Feet to feet, you don't need to use units. Okay, that's why the blueprint just had 1 to 100 or 1 to 64 for the model. But if the units are different, inch and feet, you got to include it. When setting up scale proportions, we're going to do these as proportions. So we're going to use, or we're actually going to use um, fractions, um, uh, ratio type fractions, fraction type ratios. When setting up scale proportions, it's extremely important to always set up the same unit to the same unit. Okay, for example, here we go. Here's a, a scale drawing of a house. Okay, and right down here, we've told you what the scale is for this particular house. One centimeter equals, there's our equal sign, 2.5 meters, different units. So we've included our units down here. Okay, the length of the side of the house is three centimeters on a scale drawing. What is the actual length of the side of the house? So here's how we're gonna figure that out. We're gonna start with our scale. One centimeter over 2.5 meters, okay? Equals how long is the drawing, the wall on our drawing? Three centimeters. How long is our actual wall? We don't know. That's what we're going to find out. That becomes our variable. Okay? Now we've got it set up. What can we do to solve this? Really simple. Cross multiply. Excellent. Cross multiply. Okay? 2.5 times 3. Who's done that one for me already? Yes. 2.5 times 3 is 7.5? Are you sure? Yes. Okay, good. Now, here's, here's the hardest question you're going to get all day. 7.5 divided by 1? 7.5. .5. So the actual length is 7.5. What's our unit? Meters. meters. Okay, we have centimeters over meters. Centimeters over meters. This has to be meters. Okay? You understand how that works? Very cool. See if you can do this one on your own. Quick check. The chimney of the house is four centimeters tall on this drawing. This is four centimeters. That's an awful lot more than four centimeters, but that's because I blew it up. Okay? How are you going to set up the proportion? How are you going to set up the proportion? What's the first part of your proportion? Who wants to share what they've got? What do you got for the first part? Um, I put one centimeter over 2.5. Yep, that's still the same. One centimeter over 2.5 meters. Four centimeters over X. Four centimeters over X. And now what do we do? Yep. 2.5 times 4 divided by 1 equals 10. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Do I need to double check? No. no? Yeah, I'm checking anyways. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, last class, you know, gave me a wrong answer, so. Calculator. There you go. Okay. 2.5 times 4 gives us 10. Yay! 
divided by one, I'm not gonna bother doing that because we know what that means, right? So 10 meters, because we're using our same unit. So it's 10 meters tall, okay? Does that make sense? Excellent. Let's look at maps, maps, okay? Now, when I was building this particular uh, handout, it was a complete pain because I wanted to be perfect on your paper. And so I would open up the photo thing and make the map of Korea just a little bit bigger and then measure, print it out and measure it, close it up, make it a little closer, measure it, and keep doing that. Are there more? Oh, I got a couple back here. One of you is going to have to share rulers. Oh, you got one. Excellent. Pardon? Um, let's, see what, let's see what our scale is down here. How do we measure scale on here? Look what this says down here. That's your scale. So you're going to have to take your ruler and measure how long this is. Okay? Now, here's what I want you to do. If you're using the millimeters or centimeters, which one are you going to use, miles or kilometers? If you're using the millimeters or centimeters, which are you going to use, miles or kilometers? Kilometers, because that's the metric system. Okay? If you're using inches, which are you going to use, miles or Kilometers, miles. miles, because that's the imperial or the standard system or the, uh, yeah. Okay, so here's what you need to do. We need to find the scale of the map. We're, um, this one says in centimeters, but if you only have um, inches on it, find it in inches. Okay, find if for those of you that have one of my rulers, find it in centimeters. S uh, 60 kilometers. Okay, how many centimeters is 60 kilometers? One. One, so this is one centimeter on your paper. Okay, so one centimeter equals 60 kilometers. Okay, Who do, who's doing it in inches? Someone doing it in inches? Someone want to do it in inches anyway? Just for fun? Turn your ruler over and do it quickly. So here we have 40 miles. Yeah. So three quarters of an inch, right? Three quarters or one quarter? One quarter. Four tenths. Four tenths. Let's use centimeters, shall we? Because it's got a one in it. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay. So let's do centimeters. One centimeter equals 60 kilometers. Okay? Now, here we're going to find, I want you to take your ruler in centimeters and find the distance between Seoul and Kwanju. Where's Kwanju? Did I spell it wrong? Say it wrong? <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Remember, I'm an American. Okay. It's down here. How do you say it? Kwangju? You said it right. There you go. It was close. I was close. Okay. Measure from Seoul to Kwangju. Still not right, huh? You're just laughing. That's fine. Go ahead and laugh. I don't mind. How many centimeters is it? 4.3 centimeters. Okay. So it's 4.3 centimeters. Let's use our proportion, let's use our scale to find out how far it actually is. One centimeter is to 60 kilometers equals 4.3 centimeters to x. That's what we're trying to find out. Now what do we do? What we've been doing all along? Cross multiply. Who's got it? 
258 kilometers. So 60 times 4.3 is 258. Divided by 1, 258 kilometers from Seoul to Kwangju or whatever it's close. Okay? You understand how it works? Let's do this one. Use the map above. Find the actual difference between Pusan, Pusan, and Inton. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, in your textbook, this is an American map, and I changed it to a Korean map. So you know, I'm doing my best. Okay, what's your first? What's your first part of your? Um, Proportion here. One centimeter to 60 kilometers. How many centimeters is it from Incheon to Busan down here? Five and a half centimeters. 5.5 centimeters over X. And then we simply cross multiply. Sixty times five point five gives us three hundred and thirty kilometers. It is actually three hundred and thirty kilometers between these two cities. And so you can use scale the scale of your map to figure out actual distance. But don't use that when you are deciding how to drive because roads don't go straight. The road between these two goes down here and over here and down here and over here and over here. Dung. That's an exact where the, exactly where the road is. Yeah, I'm just making that up. Okay? So the actual driving distance is going to be longer than this, but from one point to the other on the map, 330 kilometers. Okay? You think you're getting this? Yep. Okay, here's what we're going to do. The bell is going to ring in about two minutes or so. So what we're going to do is we're going to stop here. But I have some very bad news. No homework tonight. Oh, man. What kind of a teacher doesn't give homework? Okay, we'll pick this up tomorrow. We'll finish up this handout. And then you'll have homework tomorrow, okay? Take these papers and put them into your binders, and, um, and then you can pack up, because the bell's going to ring in about a minute. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.